Well, welcome back everyone to our series on textual criticism. Today we are continuing through the Hebrew Bible and we're starting with the very important set of texts that were discovered in the Judean desert, the text of Qumran. So today we'll give an introduction to the text from Qumran. So what are the texts that were discovered at Qumran? What was their discovery like, at least what we think? Uh, what texts were found there and how they're cited when people refer to them? So, in 1947, near uh, Kirbet Qumran, as the, uh, as the story goes, 15 miles south of Jericho, which is right about here, there was a shepherd who was wandering around these caves and threw a stone into one of the caves and was surprised when he heard a cracking sound of a clay jar and when he went to investigate he found uh, these clay pots, clay jars that contained biblical and non-biblical manuscripts in Hebrew. So in total there were 11 caves containing thousands of fragments of biblical and non-biblical texts. Now, what texts were found there? Well, over 200 biblical scrolls. All books of the Hebrew Bible, Old Testament, are represented except for the books of Esther and Nehemiah. However, Ezra and Nehemiah were one book, and so Ezra was found, so it's entirely possible that Nehemiah was uh, represented as well, just not preserved. The most popular books that are found at Qumran are the books of Deuteronomy, Isaiah, and the Psalms, and to a lesser extent, Genesis and Exodus. Twelve of the scrolls were written in this Paleo-Hebrew script. Uh, this is what it looks like. This is the Misha inscription. And uh, we'll probably talk about this at some point in the future. But twelve scrolls were written in this style, this Paleo-Hebrew style. During your work as a text critic, when you see the text cited from Qumran, you can identify them and understand what the citation means if you understand how they refer to these texts. So, they refer to the number, first the number of the cave in which the scroll was found or the text fragment was found. Then they provide a letter, Q for Qumran, MAS for Masada, MUR for Murabaat, which I have spelled wrong there. Sorry, there's an A missing after the second B. I can't believe I pointed that out anyway. And Hev for Haver. Then the name of the biblical book is provided followed by the number of the copies. So if they found the book of Isaiah in one scroll, they'd call that A, and then if they found another Isaiah, they'd call that B, and then if they found a third, they'd call it C, and so forth. Finally, if one of the scrolls is in that Paleo-Hebrew script, they will write Paleo in the name. So, for example, I probably should have put this first, but oh well. 1Q Isaiah A would be, it was found in Cave 1, the Q represents Qumran, so it was found at Qumran. It's the biblical book of Isaiah, and it was the first scroll of Isaiah that they found. So 1Q Isaiah A. So if it was 1Q Isaiah B, it would be the second Isaiah scroll that was found. If it were 1Q Paleo Isaiah A, then it would be Isaiah that was written in this Paleo-Hebrew script. So there you go. Tomorrow we're going to look at the dating of the Qumran text, try to get a feel for when these texts were written, their antiquity, and, um, and will give us an idea of their usefulness for textual criticism. So tune in tomorrow to hear about the dating of the Qumran texts. Thanks. Thanks.